Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. I've been warned that today's video may be a bit brutal, but it's Slipknot. And that means that there are probably gonna be some insane vocalizations to go with, which makes it all worth it. Plus, I'm all for catharsis. But before we dig in, a quick word about mental health and the sponsor for today's video, BetterHelp. I'm a big believer in therapy. Whether or not you're going through a tough time and you need someone to talk to, or you just wanna level up your skills at being a human. I personally use BetterHelp and I've been very impressed with their service. I once looked around Los Angeles for over a year for a therapist and I still could not find one. When I used BetterHelp, I was matched with a licensed therapist within 48 hours. I simply went to their site. You can use my link in the description for a discount. It's betterhelp.com, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com forward slash charismatic voice. And I answered a few quick questions, then ding. Just a few hours later, I was messaging with my new therapist. That speed really impresses me. I've done therapy at multiple points in my life and never before have I gotten in to see somebody that quickly. When you need help, you shouldn't have to wait months or years to get it. I also really appreciate that BetterHelp makes therapy possible for people who live in remote areas or who would otherwise have trouble accessing it or getting to appointments. Mental health is crucial and it shouldn't be hard to access. If you're struggling or you just wanna level up your human skills, I highly recommend BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com forward slash charismatic voice or just type in the channel name, The Charismatic Voice during sign up, and you'll receive a special discount for your first month. Your mental health matters. Now, let's give our brains a treat and appreciate some great music. Okay, I just have to mention, I'm gonna go back to the beginning and uh, I wanna point out this uh, this false impression that we have of, oh, maybe this isn't gonna be that brutal at the beginning as the volume is way down. They're like, they lull you into the sense of safety. And it's like, it gets in. I also, I love the way they really rapidly uh, move between different feels. Uh, it's both in percussion, instrumentation, everything there. It's uh, It feels almost like little flashes of craziness. <laughs> All right, there's your lull. Like, that's gonna be fine. <laughs> That switch between having a much bigger distance between the percussion, where you just want a headbang, and then where you want to, I guess, uh, be a bobblehead <laughs> when some last beats start. <laughs> right, that shift was really cool. <laughs> That's heavy. <laughs> bobblehead. <laughs> Show you the rage I've hidden. There is the sacrum. 
Just, I have to put in here, when I, when I hear of Slipknot and, and their music, I'm usually thinking about Corey Taylor sounding like he's wrecking his vocal folds. Um, and this intro, having Corey Taylor singing something that feels just so heartfelt, and it feels somber and moody, very introspective, it actually, it, it doesn't go with how I previously thought about Slipknot. And so uh, I'm excited to see where this song goes, but I just wanted to mention that already I feel like it's brought a new, uh, new point of view for me about what this, this band really stands for. Onto these chains, my friend I'll show you the rage I've given So he also sounds like he's in a particular almost metallic chamber here. They've been very deliberate in the sound on his voice. It's there. There's some production on top of it. It sounds like there's a particular reverb that's a bit metallic in there. Um, it feels like, uh, like he's being contained in some way, almost like he's singing this begging to be let out from inside the cage of the mind. Uh, I, I'm really, really curious where it goes, but I just have to mention in here that uh, I know that Corey Taylor took a break for mental health recently, and I feel that this is a constant struggle for so many lead singers, especially who are continuously pouring out their heart and wanting to bring this honesty, this real vulnerability to their audiences night after night that sends them back sometimes into dark places. And I have so much respect for a mental uh, for singers that will take care of their mental health the way that he has done, take a break like that. I just, I think that's amazing. All power to him. Do these chains, my friend. I'll show you the rage I've given. There is the sacrament. Swallow, but nothing's forgiven. That sustained stream is unexpected. Whoa, Whoa that, uh, that, that pitch bend up was intense and that's a crazy heavy hit. <laughs> okay, one more time. I have I have seen some gross Slipknot videos in the past. This one is particularly bloody. Okay, Blech. that does not look like it tastes good. Um, that that said, I need to go back. <laughs> I'm gonna maybe I'll close my eyes for a moment. No, I'll keep them open. But <laughs> uh, the layers of the voice there were fantastic, and it sounded like we had both layers of cleans and harshes with digging the harmonies. There's a lot that was happening. I need to hear it again. You know, it, it might make us a little bit queasy. I really like this build. So it's just at the very end that we have the layers with the harmonies in there and it's a flip back and forth instead, which sometimes we'll refer to as code switching, where you're going between 
essentially one type of vocalization and another. Uh, in this case, right, we have cleans and harshes, and these, these are made by different kinds of anatomy when you're doing them in a really healthy way. Um, and, or I should say really sustainable. We should define those a little bit differently. But uh, so the idea here is that the cleans are gonna be made by his true vocal folds. That's the thing that makes a pitch like he, right? That's your vocal folds going wacka, wacka, wacka and a very repetitive motion and it creates a, a pitch, this beautiful frequency. Um, when you have a harsh, you have other fleshy bits that get involved and create more distortion in the sound. So uh, this quick flipping back and forth is requiring different mechanics inside of the vocal tract. And uh, that's, I think that that's really, really cool because it's a really complicated maneuver to make happen. Sometimes vocalists like Corey Taylor or some of the other ones I've, I've discussed this with, they find it surprisingly easy when I think, wow, that's so amazing. How are you co so coordinated? Yeah, I think it's super cool. Back one more time. <laughs> There are very few pitches that he's singing right here, but it's it has great storytelling and great expression. It feels um, it feels so sad. It has so much longing in it. Uh, there's a tenderness in his voice. I, I really I like hearing these contrasts in Slipknot's music. It's uh, it's very touching, while also still being a little bit grossed out from the previous images. Uh, lovely, just lovely. You don't need a huge vocal range to be able to touch somebody's heart, uh, c to communicate that kind of sadness and storytelling. Uh, but I mean, Corey Taylor does have a huge vocal range, so it helps, but he's just keeping it simple here. Where is your will, my friend? Insatiates never even bother. where I'm turning inside. You know, it's it's always a, a debate for me whether or not I'm gonna watch a video with the music or I'm gonna watch a live performance or just listen to the studio version. Live performance is usually my preferred because then I can see how a singer is supporting their voice live. I think that is so, so very awesome. Um, but with the others, it, it really depends on, I think, well, how good the sound quality is. Um, but if you're if you're going off of a music video, I have to question how do people want me to experience the song for the first time? And overwhelmingly for this one, uh, people wanted I think the the gut reaction to so much grossness. <laughs> Just keep in mind, I'm the person that cannot watch horror videos, horror films because I will have nightmares. I, I literally will have nightmares. I cannot watch them. So I'm glad that we had this moment to take a pause to let my stomach settle down just a little bit so that my nightmares will be slightly reduced tonight. The 
such a great hit. of this is so incredible if I'm just if I'm just truly listening to how they're bringing everything together I love the way that this sound is incredibly full of so many different uh, different layers they have uh, sometimes we'll call this sound imaging um, so basically if you think about where you place sound um, in either monitors or headphones there's always some sort of image. Often we'll keep it to 180. Sometimes we'll try to give a 360 feel. Usually you don't have too much of the up and down unless you're doing something super fancy and going for video games and have the headphone ability to do that. But we'll talk about this sort of uh, virtual stage, if you will, of where sounds are placed. That is so important for helping divide uh, how we can identify different sounds within the mix. I feel that I have uh, this amazing ability to hear so many different details in my left and my right right now. And I feel that each sound has been uh, given a very definitive area. In addition to having a definitive uh, space within the frequency spectrum. So if I'm thinking about where are my lows and my highs, every single instrument have, has a little area that's carved out for them. And when I talk about a mix being really good, it's usually talking about how they're able to make every single thing clear while often, especially in contemporary music, pumping the volume really high. If you pump it too high, it just becomes this big, huge mush. So how loud can you get it? People love loud music, especially metalheads. How loud can you get it while also maintaining absolute clarity so that people can identify every single instrument? So just fantastic mix it's so sick here Okay, that section is awesome. Not the imagery. Again, oh man, stomach turn. His vocalizations, Corey, Corey Taylor is just such an incredibly, uh, gosh, I hate it when people just say talented singer because yeah, he's talented, but he's also dedicated. He's good. He's an excellent singer is the way I'd put it because he's taken talent and he has refined it. He's He's had to go through all the humps that I think the most seasoned professionals will end up going through at some point in their life. He's gone through them and he puts out incredible sounds, sounds that mix the use, uh, uh, the use of the true vocal folds, of the false vocal folds, of the air epiglottic folds probably in there. Uh, this is, it's fascinating to me. And he switches between them. Again, that code switching, it's so rapid at times. I love hearing how he can mix different amounts of phonation from the true vocal folds in here. When I hear a pitch, I think true vocal folds. That's the anatomy that has that really regular waveform it can create to create a pitch. And then sometimes in screams, he'll have tons of distortion on top and you'll hear just some pitch underneath it too. So we know that we've got a couple different things creating sounds in there. And oh gosh, I wish, I wish I could see inside of Corey Taylor's so just putting it out there. Maybe someday this will happen. I'm actively doing research with harsh vocalists to understand how these sounds are created better. We understand some because at this point, the first study is done. We, uh, we have the first steps of our really, really thorough harsh vocal research. That first step of running 10 billion tests on Will Ramos, that is complete. And we have so many papers that are being written currently about it and will probably continue to be written for years. 
but we're going to do this again on more artists because these kinds of sounds might not be made the same way in one artist as another. However, one of the most fascinating things that we're finding is this thing called, it's called the spectral centroid. Okay, it's this like concentration of acoustic energy. Basically, we're getting proof that you can acoustically identify certain types of screams and that there's continuity across the board for certain types of screams. Like where is the most acoustic energy focused on for a fry scream versus a false chord scream or maybe a, a higher and a lower constriction? We might decide to define that a little bit differently later. We're basically getting actual scientific data supporting things that many metalheads have known for years, but nobody has no one's done the research. I love it. I love that we get to do this. So with Corey's voice, when I'm listening to him, I'm thinking, wow, how many different places along the vocal tract is he constricting? Because I hear so many variations. And this kind of multiple source phonation is, it's really important for research in so many ways beyond just curiosity about harsh vocals. This is going to apply to all kinds of things <laughs> we can apply it to just even having a rattle, for example, in rock and roll, but we can also start bringing it into psychology and how our brains have developed and just communication and how that's developed overall. I mean, I'm, I get really excited about that. I know I've had an aside for too long, but y'all, I'm really, really excited about it. And Corey Taylor is one of the people that makes me excited about it because of this bridge. Let's hear it again. I'm not your devil Sounds like a fry scream with pitch to me. That part, it sounded like he really extended the front of his uh, his mouth, of his vocal tract. It brings in a lot lower, uh, essentially lower resonances. And he might have even brought in some false folds there. And that right there is one of my favorite, I feel like, signature sounds that Corey Taylor does when he's going up in pitch, starting it clean, and then essentially it sounds like it disintegrates as it goes higher. I think that is an amazing effect. Uh, just brilliant vocal expression overall. <laughs> oh man, that delay is amazing. Meaning the delay that we hear this repetition of that scream, almost like an echo coming there. That's uh, amazing. They always make me feel like I'm going a little bit crazy somehow, so if not, well, like a little schizophrenic. a gut drop with that visualization and like I literally I just gosh it's so disturbing I think that's the whole point right to be disturbing there is some sort of catharsis cathartic release that happens um I think everybody's got to be a little bit insane inside and uh, and needs to let that out oh gosh there's so um there's so much drop. I just, I really, I like humans. <laughs> I mean, right. Some, some, some humans are better than others, but just in general, I want, I want the best for people. I really do. And so when I see this, it, it makes my stomach drop so hard. Jeez. <laughs> Wow, that buildup is so incredible. 
the you it has a, a precursor drop before the actual drop. One more time. Silence. Rev up. Precursor. <laughs> I love those vocal layers. have uh, flashbacks to Game of Thrones with that moment. I just have to say, <sighs> yikes. Wow, what a great maniacal laugh and what another scary image. Uh, uh, and another thing to mention, he has incredibly well-sustained screams too, which means that breath pressure has to be built up and supported from underneath. Um, I'm really curious how his technique has developed over time. I know he had some troubles at one point, yet when I hear a clean voice continuing the way that his is, I think he's worked those out. So I'm curious what the difference is between technique from way back when to now. That'd be a really good conversation. Oh my gosh, it's like almost like a reverse siren there. The the wind down here is incredible, but the way that, oh, there's some sort of strange release at the end. They've really designed this to be a cathartic release, the whole thing. It gets your hackles up. Whoa. That was so disturbing. Y'all, take care of yourselves. Please take care of yourselves and, uh, and have moments like this for amazing cathartic release, but please do not actually hurt yourself. Just, just putting that out there. Please be good to yourself. And uh, you should continue listening to awesome vocals like this and appreciating how incredible it is that you can make so many amazing sounds. If you wanna see some more videos, about how those awesome sounds are created, check out this playlist over here, and may you fall more in love with music every day. Mwah.